Director of Engineering in the Advanced Technology Group of, at ServiceNow, primarily in the areas of databases and workflows, and for the past 10 years on different aspects of AI and ML. The today's agenda is, uh, first is general introduction of Gen AI, and we'll spend around 30 minutes with some prompts, right? So we'll go into maybe Azure Open AI, Open AI. There is an inherent intelligence in GPT or not, or is it uh, just a play of words? Now, you could al also play around with it to say, you know, I want a better deterministic solution. Then you can actually go and change the temperature to zero, and it will pretty much generate exactly the same uh, text every time. So if you want this, you see this, most of it is greenish in color. There was no red because it was trying to uh, pick up the highest probability word at every point. So the, f the area we, we will focus on today is incident management. So let's say Alex is an IT agent. Now the, he starts by looking at what are the incidents that are, that are assigned to him. Alex looks at uh, the different incidents that are assigned to him today and he realizes that uh, there are a lot of issues that are related to match rows and he finds it fit to create a knowledge article so that uh, it helps other agents figure out how to solve this particular issue. So what, what can Alex do now? He can simply open knowledge articles and option to generate a KB article. And what I would like to do is um, draw your attention to the influence of how you instruct the language models and the behavior of the language models based on how you instruct them. And that's very important because um, we saw already that these are stochastic in nature and they're going to produce uh, non-deterministic results. The problem again, as I said, it is inefficient and ineffective enterprise knowledge spread over multiple sources of information. It could be GRA, it could be documents, it could be Confluence, SharePoint, uh, videos, training videos, etc. So, and uh, typically the degrees of difficulty, the turnaround time, the delays, wasting time, uh, just the wait time between multiple teams asking for information, uh, feeding all your data, internal knowledge base into the LLMs and making your search, whatever demos you have seen from ServiceNow, right, uh, on the LLM. So we enable all of that for your own knowledge base, for your own enterprise, internal use, hosted on-prem. So if a person has to upload their product on the e-commerce website, they have to have a knowledge of SEO, they have to have a separate background to, to, to be removed, as well as they have to do multiple, almost uh, have a content writer for the content description and all. So it took a very long period of time, some, sometimes seven to eight days to complete a total catalog to upload on a website. Each have their own standard, Amazon have their own standard, Mintra have their own. I come from 35 years of sales, marketing, global business development background. So I know the value of partnerships, I align partnerships, permanent marriages and CIA Center of Excellence because they receive a lot of members and we are also a member and we are their most recognized deep tech partner. We get a lot of inquiries, opportunities, pitching opportunity, and we compete with lots of other competitors and we won the contracts. We mainly work with schools, K-12 to start with. At least the first few rows you will have kids. Recently we opened a 30-seater office in Siddipet, the Siddipet ID Tower. We didn't come to DHub, Siddipet was a little cheaper. I think by then we had collected about 50,000 uh, papers, 50,000, hmm. about 10, 10 MOUs that were signed and we just had a presentation. But tries to enhance the lives of by using a workforce development uh, by upskilling mentoring and reskilling uh, so that they provide an opportunities they lack a lot of uh, lack of engagement because they don't have a digital ecosystem in place that's where we came into picture we created a digital ecosystem for them usually who for the organizations who are into mentoring upskilling and reskilling in the unit so to tackle this problem uh, government has introduced a system called outcome based education to implement this outcome based education system campus is struggling currently using their excel sheet so at Satellot AI, what we want to do is basically build or be where the application has to be very secure and has to work offline. Ramesh Loganathan is a professor, a renowned personality in the world of technology and innovation. Today, he is here to share his invaluable insights on building products for the future. Please join me in welcoming Ramesh Loganathan. Innovation is radical. Right? Innovation is disruptive. It doesn't always happen. Right? If you look at most successful companies, like look at ADP, most successful companies doesn't come and suddenly ADP will not come and say like, okay, we'll stop doing what we're doing and do something else, right? It is like, it is very subtle. So innovation is everywhere. It's like, yes, a startup can come with a, with a new product because they are starting from scratch and they can. And larger organizations also need to innovate and do innovate uh, to stay in business. We know what happened to Blockbuster. So they didn't, the writing was on the wall. It's a classic case study, Blockbuster video. They were everywhere. Like, like a McDonald's, if you, if you drive through US countryside, if you can see a McDonald's, you'll see a Blockbuster. Abhinash is a seasoned product management professional with over 18 plus years of experience to MNCs over the over these years solving people's problems 
and creating great product and product communities for people. Abhilash, we welcome you. I'm also the co-chair of this event. I will brief about come together and become the melting pot of ideas. So we bring up something out of it, get together and grow as a group and as a community. So we become a global leaders uh, for global companies. Chandrasekhar is a distinguished senior director of product management at ADP. With over 17 years of expertise in product management, he is a seasoned leader known for successfully launching new products, achieving product market fit, and driving imperative growth for Fortune 500 companies. I invite Chandra Shekhar onto the stage, please. We have been following a principle of easy, smart, and human. Groomed internally in the recent past, in the last five to 10 years. So what does this really mean for all of us? So as we kick off this Product Leaders Forum, I'd like to share some thoughts on the exciting future of product management. So first and foremost, um, I'm very proud to represent ADP, human capital management with revenues exceeding $18 billion and a client base exceeding a million. Thinking about as I was driving into this event, what's happening with AI, uh, I don't know how many of you had a chance to read a memo which uh, Sundar Pichai put out, I think, in a couple of days ago. If you look at what, how Google is thinking about uh, what they're planning to do with AI, and I think it has profound impact. Applications. He also talks about, uh, you know, responsible AI. Abhilash is a seasoned, worked in startups to MNCs over these years. He is a patent holder and, a pas and passionate about solving people's problems and creating great product and product communities for the people. We welcome you, Abhilash. Stage where we have the opportunity, but now how do we build on these opportunities? Or you know, we call them challenges, but I will call them as opportunities. I don't think there's anything new. What has Gen AI or even the predictive AI before that bring in, right? The first thing that it brings in is lots of data. The ability for us to collect lot of data, the ability for us to process lots of data is the opportunity that the technology has brought in. If you look at the privacy part of it, you all are familiar with the security statements, right? It's mandatory, irrespective of whether the government is asking you to have a policy in place or not. A security statement is a mandatory complaints document as a person responsible for delivering a product in your organization is responsible for. That is, comes from your business teams, from R&D. You all come together to have the documentation ready. I belong to a division in Microsoft. Immediate tendency say that we have enough data. It is about the preparedness of do you understand your data and what, what was the intention or intent behind those data, how it has been collated, collected over a period of time. One of the examples, a customer has claimed that they have 100 years of data with them. So data is not an issue, just bring the best algorithm and solution and we'll make it happen. In today's world, you also have some predefined models for startups to to, uh, to use those data set. I bring that analogy of a uh, student who is getting graduate in a college who gets trained on a particular domain. Going to an academics, he learns some topic and he gets some domain experience. Consider fine tuning at the next level where he is getting postgraduate. I request the panelists. Krishna Chaitanya Puttugunta is a prominent figure in the world of AI in your industry that has brought significant change or value? Firstly, coming from the HR space, representing the HR fraternity, along with Lata over here. Thank you for having me, first of all, amongst all the product management community. Uh, oftentimes, got tempted to move on to the product side as well. Uh, Amit knows this, some of my other fraternity people, Ranjan knows this, as an expert, as all of you sitting here, but definitely on the thought process and approaches and how we can enable and facilitate some of these things as a culture across in, in you know, amongst all the uh, employees in the organization is where my expertise lies in. So coming to the question on what we have done in the space, it's the, it's the buzzword right now. This is something that in one of the products, a lot of our client service reps, uh, you know, receive calls, they have to take case notes. Uh, it's a manual tedious process. And have the solutions, uh, the smarts delivered on the edge. But here you have to make a millisecond, microsecond based decision. So putting it all on the embedded, uh, you know, uh, space is where the challenges lie from a hardware and, uh, you know, point of view. From a software and the compute point of view, the amount of data is humongous. And with 5G, 5G as you know is a higher, uh, you know, a millimeter wave, so a higher uh, frequency uh, kind of a communication uh, carrier. So what happens is with higher frequency, the kind of um, uh, range that gets reduced. You all know the AM radios used to have like countrywide ranges while FMs have citywide. And, and, and 5G has a few hundred meters, whereas 4G use, uh, goes in the two kilometer range. So because it gets absorbed so fast, there are far more towers and far more these devices which need to now talk to each other and far more data than ever. 
the first and foremost step is data management. You don't get in uh, cleaned data like what you get a textbook data kind of thing. So the first and foremost thing is the data which has to be managed, okay? And the managed data, we need to generate an insights. So there's a data management, then we need to use it for insight generation, then the whole process has to be automated. So this process of automation is basically most of the process are messy and most of the process are uh, uh, kind of an where we do a lot of human intervention and then we tend to see a lot of mistakes. Then the third and important point uh, is in ma uh, automation side of it. Then the fourth point here is once you have that, you should have also have a predictability of the data. The data what you have should able to predict some something in the future or it can predict in, if it is a time series kind of thing, we can predict a future or if it is a cross-sectional kind of thing, we can use uh, the uh, uh, next happening event across the similarity kind of stuff. We've seen that design is a critical component in this industry and uh, we, thought, we thought that, you know, building a SaaS product that can um, sort of mechanize this process, there is some merit to doing it. I mean, end of the day, uh, I'm sort of walking you through the journey of an entrepreneur because that was the use case we pursued, right? Uh, what we've realized is while there is benefit, while there is merit to building such a product, monetizing that is very, very difficult. And we started digging deeper into the industry that we were operating in. A lot of people were happy to have AI produce interesting designs. I mean, what you'd call prints. I mean, some of you are wearing fabrics which have printed artworks on top of them. It could be a women's dress or a top, etc. right? Produce designs that have an increased likelihood of success in the market. Right now, we are sort of bringing a scientific approach uh, to, to sort of committing fabric and, and garments. You know, here is, a, here is a perspectives that I will bring in. There are three points of view that I will bring in, right? What is changing in the landscape that you think we should bring about to help people get better at? This is a continuous question that I ask. That's a first perspective. The second one is the hiring manager's perspective. Because, um, you know, uh, almost about eight to nine companies every month come to hire at IPL, and uh, all of them are looking at different skills uh, and are they changing? So how important is generative AI? Uh, are they looking for any of those skills right now for while hiring? I want to frame what product management is. As I said, there is lots and lots of definitions, lots of lots of misunderstanding in the industry. I spent 25 years working as an engineer, 14 years as a product manager and product leader, and I work with hundreds of companies in, in when, which, which are trying to hire. Uh, for a hiring manager, when he, when he gets to screen hundreds of uh, resumes, be it 500, 600. Uh, because of the volume of resumes or the candidates inflow of the candidates that they are getting, they typically go with uh, algorithmic uh, sorting kind of thing where they add some blind rules key, uh, four plus years of experience. And in fact, uh, Gen AI can in fact even hide the details like uh, uh, demographics of a candidate or gender of a candidate where you can configure in the products. Uh, which will reduce the biasing factor to a great extent. Problem of fairness and bias has existed f since 1980s, <laughs> right? Gen AI, just because the buzzword came in, nothing has changed. As academics, we are always afraid of change, right? So, so when things come along, technology comes in, we tend to fight it rather than embrace it. I see. See, one of the biggest uh, aspect is, I mean, today we churn out a lot of students, IITs, IIMs, or various universities. But how well are they kind of uh, having an industry exposure? Because gone are the days of bookish knowledge, right? And we have chat GPT and various tools. So I think the best way to bridge the gap is to give them real life, real time projects, and also have a lot of academicians to work in the industry so that they are able to go and translate and add value to the students so that the students understand the concepts and also how to apply these concepts on a day to day basis. So once these two are kind of mixed, that will really help the students. To stay informed about the startup ecosystem, subscribe to my startup TV.